welcome to Bunny This Kitchen and thank you for joining us. What I'm going to be making today is a delicious batch of white bread. What we'll do first is show you the ingredients that's going into our white bread and then we'll get started. What we're going to be needing is eight and a half cups of white all-purpose flour. We're going to be using two tablespoonfuls of fast rising yeast or yeast of choice. We're going to be using a half, uh, half a teaspoonful to a full teaspoonful of sea salt. That's up to you. We're going to be using two tablespoonful of melted butter. That's equal to a quarter of a cup. Three cups of warm water and two tablespoonfuls of white sugar. So let's get started. So what we're going to be doing to start off making our white bread is getting the yeast to rise. So we're going to be putting the yeast and one tablespoonful of white sugar into the warm water. So let's get started. So you're just going to toss your two tablespoonful of fast rising yeast or your yeast of choice and one tablespoonful of the white sugar into your three cups of warm water and you're going to stir it around. What you're going to do next is set this to the side and let it start to rise. It'll be about five minutes or so and if you forget it for a few minutes that is okay. So let your yeast rise and you see that it's starting to rise nice there now. So let's get started making this delicious white bread. So right now what we're going to do with the eight cups of flour that's in our large bowl and this large bowl got a lid and I got the half a cup of flour to the side for putting in there as we need it. We're going to pour in our yeast all into the bowl. Just going to make sure I got all my yeast in there. And then we're going to pour in the warm, the warm melted butter. So make sure everything is nice and warm. We're going to be pouring in our, our tablespoonful of sugar. Just pour it around. And the same thing with the salt. Just pour it around. And then what we're going to do is start stirring all of this in. Now with the salt, you could use half a teaspoonful or you can go to full teaspoonful. That's all optional to you. So just mix it around. So if you've got a kitchen aid that got a oak, you could put this in there and use the oak that would bring all of this together. If you don't, use a nice wooden spoon that'll help you move it around. So what I'm going to do now is start working this through with my hand and then I'll show you what that looks like. At this stage of making your white bread or any bread, this is where you can add more water or more flour if you need it. But as you can see, as long as it's got this texture where it's a little sticky, you still got lots of flour and then you're going to be working it around. And at this is the only time that you can do that because once you turn it into a ball you can't add any more water to this batch. So let's mix it all together. I love working with dough and if you see me on previous videos I'm in my happy place when I'm there. So pretty much when you're working your bread kneading it down is what I would call it and that is what makes it perfect. So what I'm going to do now is continue bringing it all together and I'll show you what that looks like. So just pushing downward with your fist and like I said if you're using a kitchen hook on those kitchen aids it'll make it easier for you but working with dough is relaxing so just pushing it down on your dough you see this texture of your dough that's perfect. So you just push it inward like this, taking on any flour around the bowl until it all comes together. So having the extra bit of flour there, the half a cup, because this is eight and a half cups, that's for sprinkling into your dough if it's sticky and you need it to add some more. But right now this is perfect. So what I'm going to do 
Let's do a final pull in on the dough and I'm having a really good workout so if you're making yours or when you do start making it working with dough is a little difficult but it's fun and and the result is delicious so after you've done all of that flip your dough and I always make the sign of cross on all my dough that's optional and then after open up the dough like this and this inside there you'll see when it starts to rise because we need to let it rise about this size again to up to air and you'll see all the air holes in there and that's showing you the texture of your dough so that's all we need to do with that so after you've finished with that just sprinkle a little bit of flour around so when it starts to rise it uh, it might be a little sticky on the sides and this would help you knead it down again and blend it all together so what we're going to do we're going to take our dough put a lid on top if you don't have a lid you can put parchment paper over the top of it and then what I'm going to do I'm going to reach for my towel and I'm going to wrap it and I'll show you what that looks like so what you would need is a nice big bat towel or a beach towel or even a blanket a small blanket and wrap your dough you want to keep it nice and warm and if you can put it into a sunny spot in your kitchen by the window or even just over the, the hood turn on the light and let it shine down on it leave it like that for about 30 minutes meet me back here and I'll show you the next stage now we're at the next stage of our bread making for our white bread and uh, there's been 30 minutes now since we put it in under the towel so I'm going to show you what that looks like and we knead it down again. I'm going to unwrap the dough and this is what the next stage of your dough should look like. So as you can see, you can see all the pockets in there and the texture of the dough. So pretty much what we're going to do now is fold it in and push it down. It's got nice cracking sounds. That's a good sign. And just fold it down using your flour to go out around just to help with bringing it all together. After you've done that, flip it over. I'm going to put another opening in it, another little sprinkle of flour, and we're going to cover it again. Okay, so you're going to just cover it with the lid again or your parchment paper. We're going to get the same towel and put in under the bottom and up over. You're going to keep it now in a warm place again for 30 minutes, or if you forget about it, that's fine. While you're waiting, and keep it in the warm. While you're waiting, prepare your pans. You'll need three bread pans for this. And then, uh, and then after when I come back, I'll show you what the last stage of our dough looks like. So meet me back here then. Okay, welcome back to Bonita's Kitchen. This is the next stage again of rising of our dough. I'm gonna show you what that looks like and then we'll start getting it into the pans. Okay, so this is what it looks like. Now I always let my dough rise twice like this because I always say it makes it twice as good. So um, let's get our pans now prepared and then we'll get this put into it. And what I mean by getting our pans prepared, some, some butter or oil um, and just make sure that your pans is well greased on the inside. I got a fourth pan here and that one is for bread buns. I'll show you how to make those on this episode. And if you wanted to check out um, Bonita's Kitchen for Towtons and Frozies, that's up there as well. I won't show you that today, but if you don't want to make the buns, you'll be able to make the Frozies. So let's get going on making our bread, taking off the dough and forming it into little balls. 
So what you do first is put a little bit of butter or oil on your fingers so that when you lift up your dough, because we're not kneading it down now, we're going to be cutting off a piece. I got the weights off to the side there. If you want to measure what the amount of your dough is, you can to have them all the same, but pretty much we just want small little round balls like this and I will share the size as we go. So if you want to measure them and get the weight of each dough that you're going to be using for your pans, just have yourself scales like this and, uh, and just get all of them to one side. And this is about six ounces for this, this one there. And you put it into the pan. So I'm just going to continue on making these small little balls. Now if you've got bigger pans than mine, you could make bigger loaves of bread. And again, you just take the piece of dough, fold it inwards like this, and if you don't want to do that, you can take one piece of dough and make one full loaf of bread. So you just cut yourself off a nice piece and just fold it like this and then put it into your pan like that and let it rise. So I'm going to continue and leave that one there and then I'm going to go and finish the other pan and then I'm going to show you how to make those little bread buns. You can reapply some oil on your hands. I'm just using butter. I'm going to use the last bun here now for my bread and just form it like this, put it into my pans. Now, what I'm going to do is show you. We're just going to be doing small little pieces of dough like this. Now, if you don't want to be making bread uh, buns and then just put them in to your pan, um, you could, like I said, use the dough for more bread or towns. And I'm just folding it inward like this to make about 10 or 12 little bread dough balls like this. So just take your little pieces of dough, fold it in under, just roll it and then put it into your pan. So last but not least, and then what I'm going to do is tuck that little piece of dough in with the full piece and I'll show you how to do that if you've got some left over. I'm going to take this full piece and I'm going to tuck this in under like this just to make this piece a little bigger and put it back in. So that's all you need to do with that. Now you might have heard me say in previous videos from making bread, I'm not fancy and you shouldn't be because when you're making bread for yourself and your family and friends, you shouldn't have to worry about what the bread looks like, the shapes. But if you want to get fancy and you want to weigh your bread and get each bun the same, that's what to do. But outside of that, all you need to do now is take some parchment paper, cover the top of your bread pans like this. You're going to take the same towel you used for covering it when it was doing its rising stage and you're going to put over the top of the, the pans and keep it there in that warm place until it rises for another 30 minutes. And then meet me back here and we're gonna put those beautiful dough bread balls in the oven and get them baking. Now we're at the final stage of making our delicious white bread. So all we need to do now is to remove the towel and the parchment paper and then we're gonna get those loaves into the oven. Okay, so pretty much we're gonna be putting the bread in the oven on a 350 degree heat for 30 to 35 minutes until it's a nice golden brown and it's gonna rise up even more. So I'm gonna put mine in here, meet me back here when they're done. I'll show you what they look like. We're at the end stage of making our white homemade bread and right now it smells amazing in my kitchen. So I'm gonna reach for it in the oven. I'm gonna take it out and show you what it looks like. Goody, it smells absolutely amazing. So 
So I'm going to take them now and pour them out onto my counter and then we'll show you what all it looks like. Just look how lovely they are. Now all I'm going to do now is to glaze a little bit of butter over them and we're going to cut into it. So just a little bit of butter just to soften up the outer crust and the same over our buns and then I'm going to take the same parchment paper we used for letting it rise put over it and then I'm going to put a towel over the top of that and we're going to let it rest for just a few minutes and the reasons behind letting it rest in under the towel for a few minutes you've probably seen it in previous videos of mine it just to help soften up the top layer of that crust now if you like the crust start leave it off and you don't even need to butter it but I love it when it's got that nice texture and as you can see here these were made yesterday I'm going to take one loaf now out of the bag this is what you would do with your bread if you want it to stay fresh for long periods of time when it's come when it comes to room temperature put it into a plastic bag seal it and then this is what it looked like and as you can see just look how nice now I'm gonna cut a piece here I'm gonna cut the outer piece which we call it the eel and you can see the bread inside all of the pockets the air pockets and the texture of the bread and what I'm going to do now is reach for one of my loaves of fresh bread that we just baked and I'll show you what that looks like all of the steam is coming up to my nose it's delicious these this bread is blazing out of here now so I'm going to cut a piece it's really hot on the fingers and I'm using a serrated knife and you see the steam coming up there and just look at the bread that just come out of the oven how lovely it looks and how easy it is to cut even when it's fresh and I'm going to put on now a little tiny bit of butter and jam onto this one just look at how lovely this bread is if you're expecting company and you want to put out some fresh bread with um, some cheese and jams and right now I got a raspberry jelly and my plum jelly that um, we made just recently so I'm going to put some molasses over this one because here in Newfoundland and Labrador we love molasses bread and when you put molasses on bread it's just so tasty so that's that one I'm gonna put a little bit of butter and some jam on this one and show you what it looked like that's what that looks like and that's what I call a feast there nice bit of fresh bread freshly from the oven and this one is a day old so now I'm going to reveal our bread that we just took out of the oven just put this back here and just look how nice and soft all of it the buns the bread of course this one in the middle is absolutely amazing so this is it this is as good as it gets and I hope that this episode was helpful, helpful for you guys to make our delicious white bread. It was delicious. I'm going to have my piece of bread after, and I'm sure Raymond is going to have ease as well. Oh, you better believe. So, if you enjoyed this episode of our white bread and you'd like to see more, don't forget to subscribe and you will get a notification each time. And if you want to visit us on our Facebook page or even on our website, www.bonnydiskitchen.com. And before I go, if you want to put your bread into bags like this, to keep them fresh longer put them in your deep freeze they're good there until they're gone just take them out as you need them and if you don't want to make rolls and you wanted to make teltons we do have a recipe on Bonita's kitchen to show you how that is done as well and don't forget to like or share any of our videos send us a message on any one of the links we would love to hear from you and for now from our kitchen to yours Thank you for joining us and you have a wonderful day. Join us by the sea, a journey in culinary, always an open door. Benita's Kitchen to yours, Benita's Kitchen, Kitchen.
If you're visiting Newfoundland and Labrador, don't forget to check out the beautiful town of Spaniards Bay and join us again on Bonita's Kitchen.